Hello again, everyone. So to continue our research series, uh, the next thing I'd like to talk about is NIOSH. Typically, we think of NIOSH uh, with our NIOSH books, and those are a great tool. I usually tell all my clients, you know, hey, get one in every truck. You know, you can have one if you're a fire department, you can have one in every ambulance, on every rig. They're small, they're convenient. Uh, thankfully, they don't update them a lot. The information in there is pretty, um, pretty solid. And so you can have one of these in an area for quite some time and not have to worry about updating it. So you can use it off the internet too as well. And I was going to show you that. So I'm going to open up Chrome and I'm just going to put in NIOSH pocket guide to chemical hazards. And there you can see it comes up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the downloadable versions, this link right here, and show you what you can download. So there is a zip file that you can download. And personally, I'm not sure exactly what that does. I think it's the same as this uh, execution file here. It, uh, it just comes as a zip file. And then you have the PDF version. Uh, I would tell you I've downloaded the PDF version and about the only thing I use it for is to snip out of it and insert photos of not different NIOSH pages in PowerPoint. Other than that, the PDF version is horrible in my mind to scroll through to find a chemical. And you got to remember this book is like 400 and some odd pages. So uh, it's a very large PDF and I, I, I don't utilize it. What I usually do is download the executable file. And essentially uh, what it does, it works in your browser and it looks like you're online, but you're really not. So you can have NIOSH and the same interface as when you use it online, um, but not connected to the internet. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna click search the pocket guide. And I'll just show you what it looks like when you do it online. So we're gonna go back to our good old chlorine here because that's what we've been using as an example and uh, you'll get a bunch of hits on it you know it, it's talking about the NIOSH pocket guide to chemical hazards um did I spell it right okay I want to make sure I spelled it right um you know and really all I do is I scroll through here till I find uh the one I want and hopefully it's this for oh so this link will take me to the page number of every chemical that starts with a C. So if you do that, because I didn't see it pop up right away, which is kind of odd because it's a pure chemical and should have popped up. So, oh, I've got the numbers first. I got to get past the numbers and I'm scrolling down and there's chlorine. So when I click on it, this is what it looks like. And so if you looked at the book version of NIOSH, these boxes are the same. It's just they don't quite look the same. But you've got the synonym and trade names. You've got the CAS number. Um, you got the RTEX number. Uh, you got the DOT ID and guidebook. So here is this 1017. That's the ID number for chlorine. If you'll notice 124, the guide number is hypertext. Well, if I click on it, uh, it's going to bring up the ERG and it's a little slow because again, I'm hot spotted to my phone, but there you go. And so there's the ERG pages for it. If we continue on with NIOSH here, we got the chemical formula. We got the conversion for part per million to milligram per cubic meter. We have ideal H. We've got our exposure limits. We've got measurement methods. Um, the physical description, and then we start to get into the nerdy stuff. So this is essentially all this area is the, uh, this area right here is the chemical and physical properties box that, uh, we look at in the book. You got your incompatibilities and reactivities, exposure routes, signs and symptoms, target organs, first aid and PPE and all this other stuff that's 
uh, in NIOSH. It does give you a little more information like um, the respirator recommendations. This is all really OSHA stuff. Um, but, you know, it, it, the information's there. It just, like I said, it doesn't look the same. So what does it look like if I download the file and, and uh, use it offline? Well, it looks pretty much the exact same. So this is the offline uh, version of it. And so it's just, like I said, running an Internet Explorer. And uh, it, it's going to just go to the database that you downloaded uh, on your computer. So uh, same thing. So I'm not going to open it up and waste your time. But um, there you go. That is NIOSH and getting it on your computer. And uh, like I said, when you download the executable file and run it, uh, basically it'll put this shortcut, an Internet Explorer shortcut, or at least that's all I've seen when I've done it. And it'll just say NIOSH. And there it is. The PDF version, if you download the PDF, you've got to rename it because it has a goofy, it's got a goofy naming system. It really has just a number. So make sure you download it right away. Or uh, sorry, change the name right away so you can recognize that it's NIOSH. So that's about it. I'll be honest with y'all. I don't use NIOSH a lot on the computer because I will typically have my book with me. And so when I'm running all these databases, you know, I might have uh, Wiser open on one computer screen, Cameo open on another, and I'll show you guys Cameo next, actually. And then if I got my book laying in my lap, I can easily view three chemical databases all at once. So that's personally how I do it. Uh, again, leave some comments if you know a better way. Thank you.